What's going on YouTube? Feel like making a video tonight before I uh, check me a little movie out. Standing by waiting to go to the doctor. Unload, unload these barges, but until then, I feel like making a video. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about, you know, me and my grandma had a conversation. She was saying, you know, she, she noticed I've been going extremely hard and, you know, she wanted to make sure that I was pacing myself. I said, nah, Granny, I'm good. You know, I said, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a rhythm right now. And I had explained to her, letting her know that I had plenty of time to chill back in the day when I was playing during school. I had plenty of time to, 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 to rest when, you know, I should have been building. You know, granted, I didn't play long. You know, um, with where I'm at now, I started at 20. I should have started a little earlier, but at 20, that's when it was like, oh shit, like I, I have no more room to play. Like I really have to turn this around because what the picture seems like now, you know, after a while the domino effect of that, it, it, it ain't gonna be good for me. So things need to change, you know, like now, you know? And I told her, I appreciate your concern, but let me introduce you to what I need to be to get to where I want. I had to explain to her that who I'm trying to become, this is like a woodpecker. It's every day. Gotta get it. Can't get tired. Gotta make it happen. You know, gotta keep chipping at it. Gotta keep chipping at it because I'm chasing something. I'm coming after something. I want to see a change. I want to see. I want to see some growth. I told her that I appreciate you being concerned about my well-being and you know how hard I'm going, how hard I'm going, and you know I don't take too many breaks. But see, when I look at life and I see how it's breaking people down, it's like okay, I know I don't want that. When I look at life and I see how not everybody has the opportunities to come out of the hole, I know I don't want that. When I see how if I drop the ball where I could be, I know I don't want that. So when you look at all that shit, it ain't hard to come up with. Your ass need to hit the pavement every day. You need to be on your shit every day and that's why here recently you know with me turning 32 i can't be around no foolishness i don't want to hear it i want to be around it um i'm cool with it i'm cool with understanding that everybody's not going to understand that and honestly i'm not trying to make nobody understand you do what you do and i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do because as again, like I said in the beginning, I'm chasing something. I'm at a point in my life now where it's like, all right, God, what's next? From what I see, I've hit that, I've hit that glass ceiling, and I'm trying to figure it out. Like I, I know it's more in me. I, I done got to this level. I done got the house. I got the wife. I got the kids. We got the cars. You know, we got money in the account. We're doing things, we're going places, we're dreaming, we're building dreams. But something ain't, something, something ain't right. And when I mean something ain't right, I'm not saying what I got going on is not right. What I'm saying is, what I've been saying since I was in high school, I feel like a uh, shaking up soda can that hasn't been opened yet, which means there's something more that I could be doing. There's a purpose that I should be fulfilling. And it's like, I don't feel like I hit that yet. So now I'm at a point now where I'm searching. And this is just me, you know, thoughts, you know, um, you know, coming out. And I'm a, I'm gonna name a few people because I don't know if somebody's at this point in their life and hey, we might figure this shit out together or hey, you know, I might just help you or you might just help me. I'm up to the comments. Um, I'm gonna talk to about three people 
that just inspired me to, I, if they can do it, what you gonna do about yours? One, Tabitha Brown. Two, Ha Ha Davis, the comedian. Who else I wanna talk about? Um, what's the third one? Um, oh, it's a movie my grandma just put me on and it's called, um, I believe it's, if I only could imagine, something like that, it's on Amazon Prime. So, Tabitha Brown, you know, this was a point where it's like, man, I gotta, what's next, God? What, 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 what am I gonna do? I appreciate where I'm at, but I know you got more for me. I appreciate just everything that's on my plate, but, and this ain't just about the money. Granted, I want that to grow because Exposure leads to expansion, and I want my kids to be able to see a lot more than what I did. I want to be able to change lives, and that's the position I want to be in. Most people want to know why I make these videos. To be honest with you, my talk about this damn small, because I chose to take a different path than most decided that they didn't want to take. I chose to take a different path. I wanted different. I wanted better, and because of that, I've learned that it's like this it go just like that different paths and I'm not apologizing for that family friends whoever they look if you chose a different path that's on you but I want it different for myself and because of that you gotta be careful people become envious of you for choosing the right path for you you know I don't have the way I got the way that worked for me and I'm just profiting off of it. I can't help to break the, the route that you chose didn't work for you, but we'll get to that later. So anyway, time with the Brown. I'm listening to his video, but just about how God worked in her life and things shift. And she's explaining how, you know, she had this vision of how she wanted her life to be. She's praying to God. So I'm like, I, I'm at that point where it's like, okay, things is great, but I know you got better for me. I know over the years I've been aiming too low. My grandma has been telling me, you know, God got better for you. You aiming too low. So it's like, I, I got enough strength now. I got that ball and arrow up. God teach me where to point at. Teach me how high to point. Do I need to go this high? Do I need to point over here? Where do I need to aim? So I'm listening to a video and she's saying how she wanted her life to be on this level, but it didn't necessarily get there when she wanted it. And I'm gonna just kind of skip it in order so I can get along with it. And she's saying how, you know, God gave her a vision and said, you're gonna have so many followers, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it was YouTube or TikTok or Vine, whichever one it was. So she's doing all type of things, you know. She's trying to act, she's doing Uber, and I believe she went to Whole Foods and she, you know, she went vegan or whatever, and she made a video about, you know, a sandwich or whatever she had, and it went viral, and it did very well for her, you know, but she was saying how before then, she, um, got online, and she was expecting to do big numbers, and she didn't, I think she said only like 30 or 40 people pulled up, and all those people, she's the one that personally told them to, so she said, previously God gave her a video says, you gonna have thousands of followers, da 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 da, or this, that, and third, and she didn't get that. So she said she got immediately sad, things didn't go the way she wanted, you know, it messed her up a little bit. But that just goes to show, God always got better when you're in alignment. But because as far as we can see, we don't see that far. We don't see no further than what's in front of us. But God got it all pictured out. He says, I know the plans I have for you. We don't, but he does. So for somebody to know the plans that they have for you, they got to see a broader, you know, vision of what we do. And she was saying how she um, ended up doing that video. And I'm skipping through some points. She had a pod, this was the podcast she did with Kevin Hart. I think it's called The Gold Mines. And... She said, Whole Foods reached out to her and, you know, was like, yo, we seen your video, we liked it, we 
people would like to work with you. That was a break. That was a moment. But before that, I believe she had got sick. And she told God, if you heal me, you can have me. So I'm thinking, you know, let me replay that. You know, I'm turning the volume up because I'm working on a boat. And I'm really trying to figure out, like, what does that mean? And for a man, as a man, you can have me. I'm submitting. What does that mean for me? Like, what am I saying? Like, if I if I want to run this prayer to God, what am I saying? You know, I'm not sick. But I know that I've always had people, you know, prophesy out my life that, you know, I was going to be this or I was going to do this. And I wanted to know, you know, what? Now I'm at that point, what? You know, what, what does that mean? So as I'm, as I'm hearing her, I'm really trying to, like, understand it. And if you heal me, you can have me. So she, 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 she pretty much told God, you can have my life. You can have me. I'm following you. I'm submitting. I'm, I'm, I'm giving everything to you. Everything that he says in his word, you know, to do. She done getting an alignment. And everything started changing for her. Whole fool reached out. They started partnering with her. You know, they said, we've seen a couple of your cooking videos. You know, have you ever thought about a season? She said, yeah, I thought about it, but, you know, it didn't have the pieces to the puzzle. They said, look, we got you. As again, God had, he had to plan for her. And because she decided to give her life and, and fully submit, things changed for her and started growing. God was working for her. And I said, wow, that's, I, I need to make that prayer. Whatever I was doing before, I'm not doing no more. So for everyone that I don't call, if we always talk about somebody, if we always got to put somebody down, or just that, 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 man, I don't want to hear that. I can't. I don't want to hear it. Like, hell, I'm trying to help some folks. And I tell people all the time, when your pockets is good and you eat good, you know, it's, hey, look at me, look at me. That shit get old. Start putting somebody else's position. That's something to brag about. Start saying how God been opening doors. That's something to brag about. Not yourself. Talk about yourself get old real quick. Real fast. So anyway, I'm looking at her life now. And she's able to turn down deals that don't work for her. She's able to say what she's willing to do and what she's not willing to do. She was able to retire her husband. I'm in a position where I want to retire my wife. You know? Um... And I love her story, you know, go check it out. You know, I, I kind of skipped a lot of things, but I said what I needed to say. Uh, much love and respect for you, Tapta. My wife loves you. Um, and respects you. The next person, Ha Ha Davis. I was listening to him the other day, and he was saying how <clears throat> he was on Instagram. And he said every day he would type in on different celebrity pages. Every day, I'm the funniest comedian alive. I'm the funniest comedian alive. And he just, every day, he said he found out something through Instagram where, like, they had, like, you know, shut him down for typing for the day. I guess he was reaching out to so many people where, it was, I guess, the computer, like, realized, like, this motherfucker doing a lot of typing. You know, he might be a stalker. Let's, let's slow this motherfucker down. So they stopped him from being able to type. And what he was doing was being persistent, being consistent. Like, I am making these videos. They're getting a couple views or they're getting a lot of views, but it ain't going nowhere. So let me start telling some folks, I'm the funniest man alive. To one day, Snoop Dogg, you know, started looking at his content and followed him. And I believe he said Snoop was gonna be in the Detroit, that's where he's from, I believe, and was like, when I come in town, I'm gonna hit you up. Did exactly what he said, that man been taking off ever since then. And with that, what I've learned is, you can get a thousand no's. You only need one yes to get you through the door. You only need one person with one key to get you through that door. But what you gotta understand is before you get to that one person, that one key, that one door, your ass need to be ready. A lot of y'all want to get through the door with that person and then, all right, now we in here. What, what, what we supposed to be doing? What do I need to do? No, 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 already be ready. That way when it's time to take your ass through that door, it's go time. It's go time. That's that's what you need. And who was the last person I said I was gonna talk about? Um, I don't know if I came up with a with a, with a last person. I, I, oh no no no. The movie. 
if I only imagine. Matter of fact, I watched that tonight before I went to bed. My grandma turned me on to it. It's on Amazon Prime. Real good movie. Um, it's about this guy where he was a kid and he was he, he was brought up in this dysfunctional home. You know, dad because his life didn't pan out how he want. You know, he was talking negative all the time. I think laying hands on the mama, laying hands on him, and he just. He was broken in so many ways, so he was breaking down everybody in the house. Moms ended up packing up leaving. But the one thing she did do that blessed him the most, the son I'm referring to, is before she left, she took him to a Christian camp. But when she took him there, she rolled out. His dad was whooping her ass while uh, little man was at the camp or whatever. So, um, you know, moms got up out of there. She, she took off. But little man, he, he, he learned so much in that camp. He gained some friends. He came back home, and dad was just broken. You know, his, his life wasn't shit. He didn't have much. So in his mind, dreaming gets you nowhere. That's false. And when his son had dreams, he did everything he could to, to break him. Stop dreaming. Get you a real job. Get you something that's going to go support you one day because you ain't going to be living up in here long and kind of gave the cliff notes as well. You know, he was playing football and he ended up getting hurt, so that was it. But he didn't have no other plans after that. You know, everybody was going to college, doing something, he had no other plan. And, but he had a gift. He had a gift, the voice, he could sing. That boy can blow. If you look at the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. And he took off with it, you know? But he took what I would call his long walk. And what I've learned through minds over the years is before you can have the greatest testimony, you gotta have the greatest test. The bigger the testimony, the bigger the test. You can't skip it. I'm gonna say that again. The bigger the testimony, the bigger the test. You cannot skip it. That's what you never understand. You cannot skip it if you don't have to go through it. Um, he ended up getting with the right band. He ended up getting with the right people. But he ended up leaving home because he got tired of his daddy. He got tired of his daddy with the negativity and laying hands on him. And he went far. He started, he started taking his long walk. But within that long walk, he had to go back home. He had to go back home and, and, and fix his problems with his dad because that was blocking him. He had unforgiveness in his heart. And before he was going to leave with his dad, he's like, man, you're never going to change. He was going to leave on his motorcycle that he just drove all the way home on. That joke didn't crank up. So he's like, right, I'm gonna take daddy's truck. He looking for the keys, pull the visor down, some paperwork fall down. His daddy got cancer. Immediately he felt some type of way. He went back into the crib or whatever, and he I guess he had a soft spot for him, you know, and they was able to to build and rekindle and he was able to get his daddy right before he got up out of here. You know, get his heart right with God, get his get his mind right, because you finna check out Pop, so you, you need to get your soul right. And when he left back home, he was able to write music that meant something and go somewhere, and he made it. And with that movie, it just taught me, no matter what you go through, home life fucked up, those are chapters in the book. But don't bleed on the rest of your pages because it's up to you to finish that book, to live that book. You got so many people, oh, my daddy, oh, my mama, Man, you bleeding on the pages that you be writing some good, some good work on, and living the best life that you can. Those are chapters that they fucked up on. Don't fuck the rest of your book up because they fucked up in these chapters. But see, what I've learned from my own story, because I ain't had a best setup, but those not so good setup, those are chapters, and I'm able to flip to them when needed to bless somebody, to help somebody. As of what I'm doing right now, to be real with you. I'm an introvert. I don't do all this. But when it come to helping somebody, blessing somebody, telling my story, hey, Lord, you can use me because uh, I, how dare I? That's a testimony. And testimonies are meant to be shared. So I come out the shell for that. But um, I, I say all that to say, whatever you're looking to do, it's out here go to God but you gotta lock in and what I've learned you know thus far to lock in you gotta lock certain people out you gotta lock certain things out 
and you got to really focus on what you're doing, where you're trying to go in life, because you don't, you don't, you don't get too many chances. I read something that said, you live every day, but you die once. And you got folks that's not even living. They're slowly dying. But I will say this, once you get up out of here, there's no redos. That's it. There's no, all right, I know now, let me let me try this out. No, time don't rewind. And I'm learning to appreciate time because that motherfucker moving. It's click, click, tick, tick, it's moving. I'm looking at my kids, how they growing. I'm looking at my grandma, how she getting older. I'm looking at folks that are dying, that are leaving. You know, I call back home and, you know, I talk to my granddad and he's saying how, you know, everybody, he know, dying off, they're getting old and, you know, every day he's moving, he's living, he's, he's, at this point, I'm not gonna say just him, us in general, everybody, young, old, everybody's at a race against time. Time isn't prejudiced against anybody, it's coming for all of us. What are you doing with yours? And that's why I wake up with so much passion. That's why I can relate to Eric Thomas and why he's so fired up. When you come from not having it and you get your opportunity, how dare you? I'm gonna kick back, I'm chilling, I done made it. I got the house, I got the wife, I got the kids, I got the money. No, damn that. That's not, a, that's, that's not what it's all about. Who you blessing? Who you, who, who, who you putting in the next position? That's who I want to be. I want to be where, you know, I'm holding conventions and God put it on my heart. See that person right there? Go and give him 100000 You see this organization over there? Go and bless them with a million. I want to be in that position. Because having multiple keys, you got a lot of people that's locked out of a lot of doors. A lot of doors. And you got people that got a lot of keys and don't give a damn. I don't want to be that person. You can't take it with you. As long as my wife and my kids straight, I'm opening the doors, baby. I'm opening them. So that's where I'm at now in life. I'm asking God, give me them kids. I give you the glory. It ain't me. Right now, I drive boats for a living. If you take my eyesight, I can't see shit. If you crimp these hands up, I can't drive this boat. You take my hand away, I can't hear the guys talk to me on the radio. I ain't shit without you. I know that. I don't I don't, I don't have to be boasted. I know where I come from. I know where he brought me from. I know where I started. This all isn't because of me. Y'all go through my YouTube videos and you see what I'm able to do with how I'm living, it ain't because of me. If I gave you every detail, you'd be like, Shh, I don't see how you where you at. <laughs> If it's a God, he got to be real. He got to be working for you. Working for me every day. Even those days where I had to get away from everybody. Do you hear me? Are you hearing my prayers? Because I was praying and I wasn't seeing nothing. You see, what I didn't understand is, imagine you busy. You hard at work. How much talking you doing? You concentrating on how you going to orchestrate everything. How much talking you doing? A person that's busy and got to talk because they handle business. And in every aspect, he has blessed me. In every aspect, he has opened doors for me. And I've learned over the years, you got to be thankful for the closed doors. I'm thankful for every closed door that I try to bust down myself that he didn't allow me to. There was a couple times where I was close to busting it down, but when I got to look at it from the other side, it's like, that would have messed my life up. That would have put some years behind me. Could have caught a bullet for that. Being at that party, being on the wrong side of town, being around the wrong people, that could have caught me. That could have got me caught up. And I'm, 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 I'm so thankful and appreciative of my grandma teaching me: be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And, and really beating that shit in my head because it's like. That's a couple things, shit. I want to do what everybody else is doing. My grandma, my dad, so she always would tell my cousin, man, you know, he got this going on. He doing this. Y'all should be more like him. I'm like, look, granny, the only reason why I'm where I'm at and I'm doing what I'm doing is because God closed all the other doors to the shit I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the club. I wanted to hang out with everybody. I wanted to wear the gold, the, 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 the grills, the chains, all the fly clothes. I wanted to do all that. I wanted to wear had a pants sagging, this, that, and the third, have all the type of, I wanted to do everything everybody else was doing. 
but my spirit wouldn't let me. I felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel, nah, that ain't the move. Man, you lame. I'm gonna have to be, I can't do it. You know, I wanted to do all of those things, but all the doors were closed till it got to the point where it's like, well, damn, God, you won't let me be me. You won't let me be who I want to be. I surrender. What you want me to do? And when I got on, when I got on that time, everything changed. Everything started flowing. Everything started growing. Everything that was a desert came good ground. Everything that wasn't getting nurtured, it's plentiful now. So I'm thankful for the people that was like, man, you lame, man, this ain't for you. You're right, it's not for me. I've learned to be me. I've learned to appreciate who Anthony, Rashawn, and Treadwell is and be cool with that. And I'm thankful for that. I don't wanna fit in because if I'm gonna be a trendsetter, I'm gonna have to be authentic. I'm gonna have to know who I am and create a different path, blaze a different path. We got a whole bunch of people that are straight copies. Now to the point, how many people that are artists that get skipped past because you sound like somebody else? How many people are great actors, can be great actors, but you're trying to copy somebody else? The world needs something new. What you gonna do about it? Be yourself. It only takes one person and one key to get you through the door that you need to get through. But trying to copy somebody else's path, you'll never get there. And that's what I realized, I gotta be me. So man, these are just late thoughts. I just wanted to put these videos out there. Um, getting up to, you know, I think it's a thousand and, you know, 27 subscribers. I'm thankful for that. As I say before, people think I'm laughing, but I ain't got three motherfuckers that like me. But what y'all see in these videos me trying to do, this is me. Trying to give game, trying to show love, trying to build and motivate. This is what I like to do. I've always liked to do it. And this is why I'm doing it. I don't know why. If God chooses to bless me to go further with it, hey, I surrender. But ultimately, this helps me. Because I'm a talker, I'm an iron sharper and iron type of person. I don't have that type of team around me. So when I'm able to do this right here, this is that. When people give me the feedback and say they, they, they fuck with what I'm saying, I appreciate that. And I just rock with it. You know, this uh, it blesses me. And I hope it blesses others. Y'all take care of the night.